Hello, can I speak to Gareth, please? Can you tell him that it's urgent? Can you tell him to call me back? Sorry, what was your name again? Ivan Locke. Steve's concept was to strip away all the usual devices. So, you know, narratively, the whole film plays on one person, which is, you know, fairly unique. Action, Tom! Ivan Locke is totally on the page, and everything that he says and people say about him or to him, it's very difficult to miss him um, instinctively. I love you. OK, then. Can you not say it, but I keep the one? No, I can't. Look, I can't. This film really is about the human condition, and I think everyone will relate to it. We've all had a phone call in a car when the entire world's moving around us, and we can't stop it, and we've just got to be the best person we can be. That's what I loved about the script and this story. Have you even told your wife that someone's having your baby? I'm about to do that. He's a very ordinary, solid, grounded person who made a mistake, and he's now dealing with the consequences of his mistake. Steve Knight, I'm the writer and director of Lock. There's a certain sort of being aloneness about being in the car, driving on your own. You know, people do very odd things when they're driving in the car. They sing to themselves, talk to themselves, all that sort of stuff. And I started to think about the story of a man doing a journey, and in that journey, his life falls apart. And I wanted to capture the loneliness of that moment to tell the story of Ivan Lock. I have a list of things that I have to do tonight when uh, I'm driving. So I'm, am I on a list? Yes, tonight, yes. At the beginning of our story, he's a man who has it all. A very loving wife, loving family, and he has a terrific job. And here he is on the fateful night when he gets the call on the eve of the biggest moment of his career. Live in the 5.45 tomorrow morning, we have 350 metric tons of wet concrete being delivered to the site. We've got 200 trucks from all over the street descending on it. 5.45. 355 metric tons and 218 trucks. He's an everyman character. As Steve says, he's the most ordinary man in England. And as such, I think we see ourselves in that character. And we learn through the subtleties of his performance and how he's dealing with the very diverse kind of spectrum of characters, what kind of man he is. We see that he's going to turn left. He thinks he decides to turn right. By turning right, he has made the decision that will change his life. It's a very ordinary decision. It's a very small movement to change your indicator from left to right. But for him, it really changes his world. And then we find out what he did and what he's going to do. Can you take this call upstairs, on the phone upstairs? Upstairs, why? I have, I have something, I have something to say. The concept of it being effectively one scene, being with one guy for 80 minutes, sounds interesting. Will it work? We decided that the only person that you could live with in a car for a whole film would be Tom Hardy. We didn't want anyone else to play the role. We only wanted Tom. We decided that if we were going to make this film, it had to be Tom. We wanted Tom. We only asked Tom. I have made sure of everything and I've made sure everything is in place. You can go to sleep now, Gareth. Good night. Everything stood and fell on Tom's ability to sustain our interest for the 80 minutes that he's on screen. Action! First of all, he's a brilliant actor. I think he's the best actor we have. He read the script and loved it and, and immediately bought into it, which was great. And we talked about the character being very ordinary. Tom is used to playing characters with lots of demons and great oddness, but this was someone who is an ordinary man who this thing happens to and he really managed to pull it off. He says to say you're the best man in England. He's a man who works uh, from the floor up. He's worked in construction all his life, and now he's become prominently successful at what he does, but he's a, a working man. We needed to have a working man accent, but in, in the British Isles, you know, there's, there's many regional accents, and a lot of them come with specific stereotypical baggage, so we had to sort of choose one. Look, I know it's a shock, but it will be OK. Uh, OK. Yes, I will, I will go through everything with you, and it'll be OK. So we zeroed in on that, that being a nice voice, because the people at the end of the phone are hearing some pretty distressing stuff, and he's got to put out some fires, so it would be nice for him to have a voice which was at least soothing and gave off the, the, the you know, calm. So Welsh was what it was. Look, I need you to do this for me, Donald, right? 
So start rounding up some cowboys, then call me back. I'll be on the road. When you're driving down a motorway, I think it's beautiful, you know, the light and the way it looks. Harris, the director of photography, has captured that and made it look like a work of art. I wanted to do this as if I'm shooting a spaceship, not a car. A lot of the things that we tried to do were use reflections, use glass. We're all hypnotized just watching it. OK, stand by, please, let's go. The way Steve wanted to shoot the film as a live piece was absolutely crucial to giving a feeling of documentary immediacy. And we shot the whole film every night from beginning to end. Each night it was different, but then that left us with, as I say, something like 30 hours of footage. It felt more like putting a documentary together than a feature film. You've got a structure, but within that, you've got a whole lot of footage that can go anywhere, and you have to find a home for it. You've got the drama part, script, and the acting, and then you've got all this other footage, and it's a giant jigsaw puzzle. The greatest challenge was fitting it all together. It was an incredibly intense week for Tom, because essentially it was a theatre experience in many respects for him. He was performing a play each night. It's only him, it's only Tom on screen, with off-screen voices, the chorus, that create the narrative. Hi, love. Hello, Katrina. Even though they're not on screen, we got some fantastic actors who bought into the concept. The idea of shooting this as a play. Olivia Coleman plays Bethan. Just now, I felt like I hate you. Well, we don't know each other, Bethan. That's the simple truth. Ruth Wilson plays Tom's wife. Oh, once? Oh, right. The difference between never and once is the difference between good and bad. I know that. You don't. Andrew Scott plays Donal. How far towards C5 going to go? C6. C6 it is. Thank you. All were fantastic and responded to the surreal experience of the unique filming environment that it was. The actors were in a hotel conference room. Our supporting cast had to be there for six nights, all night, in a room together with microphones and just themselves and a glass of wine to pass the time and be ready to phone in live. The actors were literally phoning into the car from a landline. Tom was listening to their voices in an earpiece. God! Daddy, listening to this! Two goals in three minutes! Dad, seriously, you've got to put it on the radio. It's brilliant. Is your mother there? Stephen wanted the off-screen artists to act rather than just reading dialogue. So we've got props in the room, you know, mobile phones to pick up and drawers to rummage through. And so he wanted that received in the car. Because it's a real conversation, it's got this extra dimension, this extra life. And it worked really well. Are you mad? Yes. Run, I'm not... Yes, I'm mad. Tonight I've gone <laughs> mad. And I will have to get used to being mad. You and have done a like... waiting. Working with the actors was, uh, was again, symptomatic of the, you know, the beginning, which was ultimately Stephen's script. And everybody got on really, 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 really well. This Please, no. Please, no without this, it, it can't wait. Concrete is coming I'm tomorrow in morning. In Nothing can stop. Yes, I know, I know, and I'm really sorry. Please. Tonight, I'm sorry, you know, things have just, they've happened beyond my control. We enjoy the journey because we like the character, and it looks gorgeous, and it's emotionally very intense, and I don't think we've seen something very like this, if at all like this, and, and that's also really interesting. It's an incredibly compelling, intense experience. You are gripped engaged, amused, moved, and finally very, very satisfied. And everybody was on the same palette, and obstacles presented themselves as opportunities for solution in a purely creative environment where everybody was collaborating to do something which was other than uh, this sort of, say, generic formula of filmmaking. Mm. So all of that together, it was pretty non-missable. I didn't want to be not on that team, <laughs> you know, because that, that doesn't happen that often. Is everything okay? Listen. <laughs>